Welcome back class, I'm Dr. April Strom. And in this video, what I would like to showcase is how to graph a derivative function when given just the graph of some other function, let's call it f. Now we have no idea like what equation goes with this particular function or any other information, we just have the graph. And so the idea is we want to graph what the derivative function is just using this information here. Let's imagine that you have a tangent line kind of swooping around this particular function that's given. And we want to look for some key places of where that tangent line in particular is zero. So if we were to start a tangent line around here, and I'm gonna move that tangent line from left to right, and I'm gonna swoop around my graph, sort of like a little ro roller coaster, if you will, you notice it's changing, it being the slope of the tangent line, is changing from negative to positive at different times, and there's some key places, as I mentioned, where that slope of the tangent line is in fact zero. So let's look at those places first. It turns out that when I imagine my tangent line, I get a right about here, a perfectly horizontal tangent line. And that is in fact the exact location where my slope of the tangent line hits zero. So right about here, I've got a perfectly horizontal tangent line, right at that kind of local maximum, if you will. And then if I keep going, my tangent line is not zero any longer until I hit this spot, say about right here. Now I've got another perfectly horizontal tangent line hanging out right here, and I keep going, and then I have another perfectly horizontal tangent line here. And one more, if I keep going, I have another horizontal tangent at that point on the graph. And so it all four of these pink points that I have here happen to be where that slope of the tangent line is exactly zero because I actually have horizontal tangents. So when I notice this in my original function, what that actually means in terms of my derivative graph is those are the places where my derivative graph is actually crossing the x-axis, the input axis. So right here, I seem to have a horizontal tangent at negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative, negative five and a half-ish. So one, two, three, four, five in the negative zone, half right about here, I'm expecting to have a uh, point for my derivative graph that actually crosses the x-axis. So let's just connect those pieces. Okay. Similarly, for this point here, I have another horizontal tangent, thus my derivative graph should be crossing the x-axis right about here. Let's make that pink. And then over here, the third point, I have yet another horizontal tangent, so another place where my derivative graph is going to hit the x-axis right about here. And that looks like over here was one, two and a half. And so one, two and a half, I have a point that's right here. Lastly, for this fourth point, I have another horizontal tangent. And that looks like it's hitting right about here. One, two, three, four, five. So right away, when I go to tackle these graphs, I glean from the original graph that's been given to me about the function, I figure out what places in, those, in that graph that's given give me a horizontal tangent, because those are the places where the derivative is zero, the slope of the tangent line is zero, and I map those directly to the x-axis right away in my derivative graph. And so just to be clear, this is gonna be our f prime graph when we are done. Okay, once I have this sort of segmented on my derivative graph, now what I need to figure out is this. I need to know what is happening for the graph on the left side of this dashed line or this zero of my derivative function. Is the graph gonna be above or below the x-axis? Now I don't have enough perhaps information, since I don't have a true scale on the y-axis, 
I don't have enough information to say with super detail about exactly what the graph might look like over here to the left of this uh, point at negative five and a half. But I can say with certainty whether that graph is above or below the x-axis. Similarly, between these two points, I need to figure that out. Is the graph above or below the x-axis? Over here between these two points, I need to also figure out is the graph of the derivative above or below? Here in this zone, above or below? Here in this last zone, above or below? Now, where does that come from? When I say above or below the x-axis, for the derivative graph, what I'm thinking about is if the graph is above the x-axis in the derivative, it must mean that the derivative was positive in that zone. Well, in order for a derivative to be positive in a particular zone, it must mean that the original function had an increasing section in that zone. If the derivative is below the x-axis, it must mean the derivative was negative. And that would correspond to the original function decreasing in that same zone. So let's go back to the original function f and determine where the function's increasing and decreasing. And I'm gonna do so between, say, the left side of the function's graph and to this first point where we have a horizontal tangent. So from the left side up to this point here, we can see that the original function's graph is increasing. So I'm just gonna make a note here, f is increasing. From this horizontal tangent to this horizontal tangent right here, my entire function along the way is decreasing throughout. So over here, we have f is decreasing. From this horizontal tangent to this one, f is increasing once again. From this horizontal tangent to this one, once again, f is decreasing. And lastly, from this horizontal tangent to infinity, f is in. Increasing. So remember, a minute ago I said where the function is increasing, it translates to your derivative being positive. In order to graph that on this particular grid, we have to indicate that the derivative being positive is going to be the place where the graph is above the x-axis. So once again, f is increasing from here to this point. So that means on the left side of this dashed line, the left side of this point, I need to have a graph that's above the x-axis. So how about something that looks like this? Maybe I'll say something that looks like this, and it needs to head right on into the point here. The function must go through these four points that I have mapped on this x-axis. So you might say, well, that is decreasing. This is f increasing. Well, the point is this top graph is the original functions graph. This graph is the derivative graph. The connection, the link between the two is when the original functions graph is increasing, my derivative graph is above the x-axis once again. But I do need to hit this point here, so I have no choice but to actually decrease the derivative graph. But you'll agree, hopefully, that this section of the graph is above the x. Now between this point and this point, so between the zeros of the derivative graph, my original function f is decreasing, therefore my derivative graph must be negative. My derivative function must be negative. And the graph then is below the x-axis to indicate those negative values for the deriv derivative. However, I need to pop back up and connect with that zero right here since again, the graph must go through that point. We keep going. Now between this horizontal tangent and this horizontal tangent, we decided f was increasing. So again, my derivative graph needs to be above the x-axis, but connect these two points here. So I will come above and back down to connect those zeros in that location. And then in the second to the last zone, I have my function's graph is decreasing here. The function itself is decreasing. Therefore, for the derivative, I must have negative values for the derivative, and thus my derivative graph will be below the x-axis in that zone. 
And you might be asking, well, how did I know to go this low? Could we have gone much lower and back up? Certainly. You notice I was clever here. I did not put a scale on the y-axis. So we really have no way of determining yet how low or not I should go. But certainly the section of the derivative graph must be below the x-axis to indicate negative values for the derivative since my original function was decreasing there. And I'm almost done. One more section from this particular horizontal tangent onto infinity, my function is always going to be increasing. Given the arrow that's here, we can expect that function to be increasing indefinitely. So as a result, I have to now have fun function values for my derivative that are always going to be positive in that zone. So we'll just continue on up. I'm gonna put an arrow here to say it continues forever, and I'll put an arrow over here to also say that it will continue upwards forever. So now you can kind of see there were two main pieces that I needed to layer on to generate the graph of the derivative. One was where was my original function having horizontal tangents? Where, AKA, where was the function having a derivative that was zero? Once I figured that out, I plotted those on the x-axis in my graph because these are the places where my derivative is in fact zero. And then I just need to figure out what is going on in the zones in between those values, those particular horizontal tangents. Again, the link is when my original function f is increasing, it must mean my derivative is positive. And as a result, I have positive values of my function indicated by having a portion of the graph above the x-axis. And then when my original function is decreasing, it will mean I have negative slopes of the tangent lines or negative derivatives, and thus I have a portion of the graph lying below the x-axis to indicate negative values there. So I hope this helps in terms of trying to graph a derivative function based on the original function's graph. And please be sure to like this video and also subscribe to our channel. Thanks.